I had a terrible take about the Broncos last year, but apparently I don't learn, so I kind of have the same take this year. <laughs> but I'll tell you exactly what that is in just a second. But super, super quick, massive shout out to Ian Lander for the suggestion of today's video. Go drop him a sub. Their link is in the description. And if you want a shout out just like that one, just let me know what team to do next. It's super easy. But thank you all so, so much for 5,000 subscribers. I didn't even think we would get this far and we're still like growing really really quick so if you want to be an OG while you still can be one be sure to subscribe because if you like rebuilds you're in the right place that's literally all I do so you might as well subscribe let's see if we can get to 5500 subs off of this video we've been gaining like 500 each rebuild I do so it should be very doable and let's see if we can get to 700 likes on this video I could set it higher but we've been easily hitting that so as long as you listening right now like the video will easily hit that goal helps push these videos to more people it really helps out a ton and it helps me know that y'all are enjoying the videos that I make but that's enough plugging I would say I'm excited to talk about this team but it's a little embarrassing what I said about them last year but without further ado get a drink get a snack get whatever and let me tell you what I thought about this team last year and what I think about it this year so I guess we'll just rip the band-aid off early last year I said Russell Wilson was my prediction to win MVP um <laughs> I didn't expect Nathaniel Hackett to be the worst head coach of all time, potentially. And to be fair, as soon as they brought in an interim head coach who wasn't even like great, just like he was decent enough, Russ definitely looked a lot better. You know, there were a lot of reasons that stuff went wrong for him. He definitely isn't free from blame, but I mean, the team sucked, the coaches sucked. Well, I shouldn't say the team sucked, the team got hurt. So I do expect him to rebound this year. I don't feel like that's crazy to say I'm not gonna predict MVP for him this year like I did last year but I do think he'll re-emerge as like a top 10 maybe top 5 QB unless he is just fully cooked then I don't know but I like what this team did in the offseason they signed Mike McGlinchey Ben Powers they're obviously getting players like Tim Patrick back I guess KJ Hamler they drafted Marvin Mims you're getting Javante Williams back like this team was really hurt <laughs> I think Garrett Bowles was hurt too. This team was not looking good last year, so it should be a lot better, assuming they do stay healthy this year. And on defense, obviously, like the point of this rebuild, Frank Clark, I do think he is a little overrated. I don't think he's going to be like amazing for the Broncos. He's more of just a splash player in general. He's not really consistent. That's kind of how he was in Seattle too, where he wouldn't really do much. He wouldn't really get many pressures. And then, hey, like five minutes left in the fourth quarter, there he is for a sack, which is a valuable thing but obviously you want players that can do that and be good throughout the game. So I don't know, he's fine. Maybe he'll be different here now that he's in a 4-3, we'll see. You have probably the best corner in the NFL, at least like top three in Pat Sertan. You drafted Drew Sanders, Riley Moss. I liked those two picks, they're solid. I like the addition of Zach Allen. The defensive line's a little thin though. I do think I'm gonna start Uwazarike at the other defensive end position just to get some youth in there. But yeah, I mean, overall, this is not not a bad team. I was, I still am really surprised things went as poorly as they did last year. I don't necessarily think things will go as poorly this year as they did last year. I mean, just better coaching staff in general will help. I mean, here we have an even bigger upgrade. We have the GOAT Mikey McDingle, but maybe I'm just too optimistic about this team. I don't know. But with that, let's actually get into the rebuild of, of this team. So with that, I'll see y'all at the midseason point of year number one. Okay, well, apparently... EA doesn't really agree with my idea that the Broncos could be decent this year. We are two and five. That's not, not great. Um, normally this team does pretty well in Madden Simulation too. Russ is doing pretty well. Ooh, Javante Williams with 2.8 yards per carry. That looks like the major problem. Mike McGlinchey's awful. Frank Clark is doing well, but like Randy Gregory has zero sacks. We have one total interception on defense and it's Caden Stearns of all people. So it looks like our defense defense and Javante Williams are just awful for some reason. That's super fun. But for re-signings here, we don't really have anybody at all. Michael Badgley, the money badger, I guess we'll re-sign him. I have no idea why they cut Brandon McManus. That one didn't make sense to me, but maybe he was just smoking too much weed here in Denver. I don't know. But with that, there isn't really much else for us to do. Let's just, again, rip the band-aid off. Let's simulate to the end of the year and let's see how we can finish. Yikes. Okay. Um, <laughs> is that back-to-back five and 12 seasons for the Broncos? I think it is. I mean, the Broncos,
Broncos might not be great or anything this year. I just think they'll be decent, but maybe I'm just too optimistic for like every team in the NFL. But I have a hard time seeing them go 5-12 and 12 again. I mean, maybe. It looks like our defense was awful. At least our run D. We were 7th in pass yards per game, which you would hope for with a really good and deep secondary, but 31 points per game allowed, that's not, that's not great. It's hard to win games when you're allowing 31 points. Russ was solid this year, 4,600 yards, 31 touchdowns, 14 picks. I've seen him do a lot better, but to be fair, in real life this last year, he was a lot worse, so I guess we'll take it. Javante Williams kind of rebounded, 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. We had two 1,000-yard receivers between Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick, not Jerry Judy. Greg Dulcich was good, which I've seen people try to make the argument <laughs> that Jerry Judy is better than DK Metcalf. Maybe in another universe where Jerry Judy could actually catch the ball. Um, he does have the upside to be like a top five receiver. It's just his hands have really failed him in the NFL. The offensive line actually held up pretty well. Quinn Miners joins the all castration team. Uh, zero sacks allowed. If you don't know, the all castration team is my imaginary list of players that don't allow a sack in a season. And I like to call it that because I'm immature. <laughs> held up a lot better than I thought it would, to be fair. Alex Singleton led the team with 151 tackles. Tackles for loss, we had a lot. 18 for DJ Jones is the most. And then sacks, seven and a half for Frank Clark. But other than him, we had like literally none. And this team is paying these players a lot of money. Randy Gregory with two sacks. Yikes. And then interceptions, three for Caden Stearns. He was decent. One for Frank Clark, Josie Jewell, and Pat Sertan. I love Frank Clark getting more interceptions than Justin Simmons. This game is great. MVP goes to Josh Allen. I see Matt Ryan on the Packers at number four. Carson went. This game sucks. Get me out of here. If Madden 24 isn't any better, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. But uh, no Russell Wilson up here. That's not super surprising though. Offensive player of the year goes to Jonathan Taylor, like 35-year-old Randall Cobb up there. I forgot the Jets even signed him, but no Broncos up there. Defensive player of the year goes to Miles Garrett. I highly doubt we get anybody up here. Well, former Bronco and Von Miller up here. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to not a rookie anymore. Michael Mayer. I don't know about that, but maybe. Has a tight end like ever won Offensive Rookie of the Year? Uh, let me know in the comments, because I'm kind of curious now. Greg Dulcich does come in at number 10, even though, again, not a rookie. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Will Anderson. Ah, oh, yes, I love teams cutting their third round pick. That makes a lot of sense. That's super realistic. Thank you, Madden. But no Broncos up here, unfortunately. Although, to be fair, I have no fucking idea who would have even been up there. <laughs> but with that, let's forget this season ever happened. I think we're gonna look for a new defensive playbook and let's get into the offseason. I feel like this is a Super Bowl that happens a lot for some reason as the 49ers take down the Ravens 27-24. Obviously a rematch Super Bowl. The 49ers winning this one. I don't know how realistic that is, but maybe. And then for re-signings here, I mean, it's just a bunch of backups and I don't really feel like re-signing any of them. I like Tyler Beatty, but apparently Apparently the Ravens didn't or whoever drafted him because they just cut him like straight away last year or whenever he got drafted. But with that, let's get into the the free agency. Ah oh, yes, the free agency. Let's get into free agency and let's see if we can upgrade this team because apparently it needs it. Oh yeah, and what's a good defensive playbook? Someone told me to go with the Titans playbook, which I've kind of seen it do bad in this game, but we'll try it. I mean, it really couldn't be any worse than dead last in the NFL, so we'll give it a try. Ooh, we got... We got hit pretty hard by regression this year. Frank Clark regressed. Ooh, looks like Caden Stearns got star dev. We'll take that. Kwan Williams regressed, but eh, it's not like he was a long-term option anyways. Greg Dulcich only went up like two overall from 800 yards. Here's what I'm gonna do. I always feel like tight end XP sliders are too low, so this is gonna be one of the rare times where I up XP sliders. We'll go 125. Is that good? I have no idea what is too much or not enough. We'll try that though. I'm happy half tempted to go Marcus Peters, but he's just gonna regress. Early on, I obviously want players that are gonna develop throughout the rebuild. We do kinda need a corner though. I don't know. We might just wait until the draft and then make free agency moves next year, because free agency isn't that strong this year. 
mean, the best player was like Tony Pollard. We already have a good running back. He didn't play well last year, but he's a good player in real life. So with that, we're going to be boring in free agency, unfortunately, and let's get to the draft. So here in the draft, we have the number three overall pick. I had to go and get it back from the Seahawks because obviously you can't really put yourself a year in the future if you want to have custom rosters. So just a lot of things you got to work around in this game for no real reason. But with the third overall pick, what do we want to do here? I think I have an idea, but I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm between two players. I'm thinking either Jeremiah Stanford. Ooh, he might have to be the pick. Yeah. I mean, A awareness, B play rec, A pursuit. We're hoping the power moves is an A. If it's a B, he might not be all that good, but if it's an A, he could be a really good player. A to B injury, B tackle. I'm almost like half tempted to trade down one pick just to see if either him or Brett Richter get selected because Brett Richter is the other player I'm thinking of. His B awareness, A play rec. Oh, he only has B power moves though, so maybe we won't go with him. And he's slow. So yeah, Jeremiah Stanford might be the pick. I don't think I've ever really taken an edge this high in a rebuild before, so I don't really know if he's gonna be good. I don't really have anything to gauge him off of, but he does look pretty decent. The plan, I guess, is to play him over Frank Clark in hope that Randy Gregory plays better, but if he doesn't, we might just trade him away. So we'll see. But Jeremiah Stanford is 6'6", 3, or no, 258. Good lord, I would hope he's not 358. 22 years old out of Tennessee. Looks like a good player. Let's take him. And he does have hidden dev. 83 speed, which is a little lower than I expected. He just has good excel, which someone told me that 40 time doesn't have an effect on acceleration, only speed. From what I've seen, if the there's a player that has a good 40 time, but has like disappointing speed, they will have really good acceleration. And this guy has disappointing speed, but really good acceleration. So I don't know. Maybe they're dumb. Maybe I'm dumb. I don't know. Probably the latter. But he looks like a really good player. 83 strength is really good too. I like that pick a lot. Tyrell Donnell. That's a fun name. I would go with the corner here, but none of them really look great. The best looking one is Terrence Roll, but even then he's like meh. So I think we might stick in the front seven and I actually look like how Byron Hamilton looks he's 6'3 319 23 years old out of Ohio State left-handed just like me for real has decent speed for someone that big and is really strong averages out at like 40 reps between the pro day and the combine has A to C awareness which I would hope is at least a B I'm sure it is B play rec no pass rush but that's fine he's a pure nose tackle anyways that's probably where he's gonna play for us and then we'll probably move DJ Jones outside which I'm glad this team doesn't have Draymond Jones anymore because I would get them mixed up a million times throughout the rebuild. Oh, and ironically, we're replacing Draymond Jones with another Ohio State defensive lineman, but let's take him. Byron Hamilton, normal dev, unfortunately, but 69 speed, so that's pretty nice. Okay, well, this is a complete flyer. I just don't know what to do here in the fourth round. We might take Pat Joyner. I guess this isn't too terrible of a reach because he's supposed to go day three. I thought he was a UDFA player. Um, but he has okay ratings, C awareness, C play rec, C man coverage, potentially good like pursuit, good tackle. The thing I like about him is he ran a 445, which was first in the class and was first for bench press in the class with 22, which isn't crazy, but it was first for middle linebackers. So is he gonna be great? I don't know. Is he even necessarily a need? I don't know, but he has the potential to be pretty good and have a dev trait. But now that I said that, he's gonna be a 62 overall with normal dev so let's take him and at least i was right about the normal dev but could be a decent overall player we'll see really good speed at an 89 so could be decent okay so overall we had a decent enough draft um i really wish we had a second round pick because it kind of seems like that's where i do most of my damage or like third round but our third overall pick definitely was not bad jeremiah stanford's even better than i thought he would be at a 76 i thought he would be around like a 74 but yeah 83 power moves as a rookie is really really good 88 excel like y'all saw his tackle isn't very good at only a 76 77 because of the morale if he was a solid run defender he could be a monster so hopefully we can develop his run defense throughout the rebuild will start for us day one and then another player that will probably start for us day one is byron hamilton only a 71 overall i thought he would be like a 73 ish but good strength no pass rush like we expected good enough tackle i mean it's not a bad value pick for the third round it's just there wasn't 
much for us there at like positions of need, but he could develop, you never know. And then Pat Joyner, not great at a 67. This wasn't my greatest draft ever, uh, to say the least. And then the CPU thought we needed a backup QB in the fifth round. I don't really understand the point of that, but fair enough. So yeah, definitely not our best draft ever, but we got two day one starters out of it, so it definitely could be worse. But with that, let's get a breakdown of the team heading into year number two. All right, well, here's a look at the team heading into year number two of the rebuild. Not much has changed really at all. I don't think a single thing has changed here on offense. Our offense wasn't great last year, but it wasn't the problem of the team. I can say that with pretty good confidence. The problem with our team was more so the defense, but I did switch to the Titans defense like I showed y'all, so it should be better. Also, I didn't even notice, but Alex Singleton got a dev trait. I don't think he had one to begin with. If he did, I'm gonna sound stupid, but I don't think he had one to begin with. Obviously, it's pretty big that Caden Stearns got a dev trait because safety was kind of a concern of mine for this team. We just didn't really have a super good safety. I mean, we had Kareem Jackson, but he's like 34. He retired now. We had Caden Stearns, who I like in real life. I just didn't know if he was going to do much here. But the fact that he got a dev trait is good. Obviously, drafted Hamilton. We moved DJ Jones out to defensive end. Drafted Jeremiah Stanford, number three overall. So hopefully he can be pretty good here as a rookie. We'll see. I didn't really even think of the fact that we use a pure like speed rusher rush end scheme so he's not a great fit but it is what it is he's still a good player now this team has a really deep edge group with Baron Browning Frank Clark and Nick Benito all being backups so I definitely like that a lot but with that that's enough talking about the team let's get into year number two so with that I'll see y'all at the midseason point and hopefully we can do a little better than last year all right well I think that's the worst record I've ever had in a rebuild before. <laughs> oh my god. At the midseason point of year two, we are 0-7. How? How does that happen? Let's see what the problem is, because I might just trade somebody now. It is definitely not Russell Wilson. I was thinking it could be him, but he's doing amazing. It's not Javante Williams. Is it our defense again? Mike McGlinchey has been awful, at least in the first half of the, uh, the seasons, because last year it was terrible in the first half, but finished fine. Uh, Jeremiah Stanford's doing pretty well as a rookie. Randy Gregory just isn't really doing anything. He could be a potential trade right here, and then we have zero interceptions. Throughout the rebuild, Justin Simmons has zero interceptions. Pat Sertan has one. Zero this year. So it's our defense again, even with a new playbook. And I do think we are going to trade Randy Gregory here, just playing terrible straight up. So let's try to find a team that might want him. All right, well, we're going to trade Randy Gregory to the Lions for a second round pick. Just, yeah, things aren't working out with Randy Gregory. He's been playing terrible. And we're 0-7 here, so we might as well try to trim some of the fat. Just some older players. I'm considering trading Mike McGlinchey too, but they just paid him a ton of money in real life, so it would be hard to do that. I was thinking about trading Justin Simmons, but I think Broncos fans would literally kill me if I did that. Plus, he'll probably play better soon, hopefully, maybe. But yeah, second round pick for Randy Gregory seems pretty good. He'll probably win Defensive Player of the Year there or something. And I mean, yeah, it just looks like our defense isn't forcing any turnovers at all, which sucks, but there's not much I can really do about that. I can just hope they play better because they're already good overall players. So we'll see what happens there. I guess we'll pick up a former Lion in Julian Aquara for depth. But I'll rearrange the depth chart and hopefully we either win out or lose out. Like I want to either make the playoffs or get the number one overall pick. Both sound pretty good. So we'll see what happens. Oh wait, yeah, I almost forgot to check. Uh, re-signings. Is there anyone here we want back? I mean, Josie Jewell. We already have Alex Singleton. We have Drew Sanders waiting. So we'll just let him get on the field. Josie Jewell is a decent player in real life, but we have other good players here. Adam Troutman is a backup and not interested. If he was interested, maybe, but he's not. Um, Lloyd Cushenberry, he was good last year. How's he doing this year? Pretty good once again, so we'll re-sign him. He is a little interested. That's pretty cheap. We'll try four years, 23.6, and he takes it. Love to see that. And then it's just kind of depth throughout here. Nobody really major. Okay, now let's get to the end of your number two. All right, well, super, super quick before I reveal how we did in year number two, I just want to say another big thank you for 5,000 subscribers. I mean, we're almost at 5,500 at the time of recording this. We're honestly on pace to be at like 10K within the next month or so at the rate everything's growing so massive thank you for that you guys are all amazing i'm glad to have y'all as the ogs of the channel it's been like all
all super positive comments lately, which I'm surprised about because <laughs> I do insult some people's favorite players from time to time. So yeah, y'all are the goats for real. I can't believe I just unironically said that sentence, but here we are. <laughs> but anyways, back to the rebuild. Uh, normally when I have these whole like building suspense to see our record things, it means we like me uh, made the playoffs. Uh, let's just say that definitely wasn't the case here because we finished four and 13. <laughs> that's that's probably the worst year two we've ever had. Uh, year two normally isn't amazing, but yeah, four and 13 is a new level of terrible. I actually don't know what to do with this team because the roster isn't bad. And I changed to a playbook that I heard was better for the defense at least, unless our offense was just terrible this year, which is definitely a possibility. On the bright side, we do have a ton of upgrades. I'll just auto spend the rest of those, but let's check out what went wrong. Let's see the season stats. Russell Wilson was fine. 4,700 yards, 33 touchdowns, nine picks. That would be a good year for real life. For Madden, it's pretty good. Javante Williams with 1,100 yards, five touchdowns. The touchdowns are a little low there. Tim Patrick was our leading receiver. I want to develop like one of these two, but whatever. <laughs> That works. Jerry Judy got over a thousand yards. Cortland Sutton almost a thousand yards. Mike McGlinchey, we might get rid of him. He's been really terrible. The rest of the line was good. Garrett Bowles was really good this year. Alex Singleton led the team with 121 tackles. Good amount of tackles for loss. Jeremiah Stanford didn't get another sack the rest of the year. And he only has star dev, which is fine. Oh, you know what happened? Oh no, I'm stupid. When I traded Randy Gregory and then signed Julian Aquara, it for some reason resets your depth chart and I forgot to change the rush ends back to, oh God. <laughs> so Baron Browning and Frank Clark were our starting pass rushers. Oh God, I'm stupid. Well, I wanted to develop Stanford, but maybe there's still a chance of defensive rookie of the year because he was definitely on pace for it. I mean, that was overall still a really good year. 14 tackles for lost six sacks, but we'll see. Frank Clark did nothing this year, only two sacks and only four total interceptions from our defense. Something isn't right there, but yearly award Patrick Mahomes wins MVP not hard against like the worst secondary in the NFL. Russ at number nine, so at least he was up there. Offensive player of the year goes to Joe Mixon. No Broncos. Defensive player of the year. I think, I, did I say rookie? I'm tired. Defensive player of the year goes to Miles Garrett. No Broncos. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Jeremiah Norris of the Raiders at an 85. Must be like a new QB. That's kind of scary. Of course, the Raiders would find a godly quarterback when we're rebuilding one of their division rivals. That's great. No Broncos up here surprisingly. I guess we didn't have anyone. And then defensive rookie of the year does go to Jeremiah Stanford. So thankfully I didn't ruin the rebuild. He still wins defensive rookie of the year. Probably would have, I mean, he was on pace for like 12 sacks or more. So he might've been like even way better, maybe like up there for defensive player of the year, but at least he still wins defensive rookie. We'll take it, but you know, still not a good year by any means. Our defensive points per game weren't that bad. It was actually kind of the offense this year. Our pass yards per game were good. What's a good offensive playbook. I feel like the or the Panthers are always really good. Let's try the Panthers. I don't think I've ever tried their playbook. I know Bryce Young always wins like MVP or is up there at least. For some reason in my fantasy drafts, they always draft Bijan and he's a monster. So yeah, we'll try the Panthers. Hopefully that one works out pretty well. I mean, on the bright side, we have a chance to have the number one overall pick, which would be kind of crazy, but I feel like I'm not that good when I get a high draft pick. I always force myself to take someone that's supposed to go in that range and they end up not being that good. That's an ugly Super Bowl. The Falcons beat the Jets 35 to 34. Who is the Falcons QB? I hope it's not still Carson Wentz, is it? Oh, they re-signed Matt Ryan. I mean, that's kind of fun, I guess. Down to a 64. A quarterback shouldn't regress that hard. I feel like quarterback regression is a little extreme. Either way, Matt Ryan wins his first ring. Should be number two, but the Falcons didn't know how to run the ball. But we have an upgrade for Jeremiah Stanford and he does get super star dev for winning defensive rookie of the year could have been an even better year if I wasn't stupid and if the game wasn't stupid but we'll definitely take it and then for re-signings the bright side about this is we should have some money heading into free agency because this is just a bunch of backups here I mean yeah there isn't necessarily anybody here I'm dying to have back even Josie Jewell even though he has been a starter so we'll go into free agency with 58 mil to work with maybe there's some moves we can make that can free up more but we'll see this team is paying a lot of players here we're going to be trading T. 
Tim Patrick to the 49ers for a third round pick. I mean, Tim Patrick was just an 1100 yard receiver, but he's expensive. His overall isn't that high. He was really only that productive because it put him in the slot when the depth chart got messed up. So we can get that production from someone else. Hopefully a player that can actually go up in overall. I like Tim Patrick in real life. It's just for Madden, he doesn't really have much of a future because regression hits hard and hits hard quick. Oh yeah, we also have Marvin Mims. That could give him an opportunity to see the field if we don't get somebody in free agency or someone good through the draft. So that actually works out really well. Plus the 49ers had like two receivers on their roster, literally. It was Danny Gray and Debo Samuel. All right, we're not gonna go for any like major moves here, but we're going for a good amount of good moves is what I'll call it. We're just filling like the major holes on our team, pause, with like good players. Not like anything crazy, but good players. We're going after LaVisca Chenault. We just traded Tim Patrick. Now, like I said, we do have Marvin Mims, but I don't want to wait for our players to develop. I would rather have good players now because we need good players now. We were just four and 13, so we need something. So he'll come in. He The only reason I'm going for him is because he was like the only receiver interested, really. I could have gone for like Gabe Davis, but he's more, expen more expensive and not interested. So just seemed like the right choice. Plus, I mean, he's from Colorado, so that makes sense. We're going for Hunter Henry. Greg Dulcich is good, but hasn't really developed. We're going to go for Chenna Nwosu, which he's rarely available in free agency, but oh, it's not going to let me see his stats from the last year without withdrawing. But he had like nine and a half sacks last year, so could be good. Plus, he fits our like speed rush scheme. We're going to go after Bryce Hall, who's like a really underrated corner, just doesn't really get to play in New York because they have an insane top two outside corner group with Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed. And then Jonah Williams is going to be potentially our replacement to uh, not Connor McGovern, um, Mike McGlinchey. Will Jonah Williams play any better? Maybe? I don't know, but I'm hoping he will. And we do have the lead for him. I'm hoping we can get all of these players. If anything, I would be fine with not getting like either Jonah Williams or maybe Hunter Henry. I'm hoping we get Nuosu and Hall, but there are two teams that are really interested, but so are we to be fair. So I've said this a lot, but let's just rip the bandaid off. Let's see if any of these players sign. They all sign and we, ah, oh, there's one we didn't get. We get Chenault, we get Henry, we get Hall, we get Williams, but we don't get Nuosu. And there was one other good player available, but he is probably gone. Yeah, Alex Highsmith signs with the Cardinals too. Nuosu signs with our division rival, the Raiders. And there isn't really anybody else here that would make much sense. So for Edge at the very least, I think we're good to wait until the draft. Ooh, whoa, Riley Moss got superstar dev? Why? <laughs> How? Uh, it just doesn't say. Okay, some giga chad shit. Give the white corner superstar dev refuse to elaborate. I, I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> but with that, I might work on a trade real quick. But if nothing happens, we'll just get to the draft. We're just a fiend for third round picks here, apparently. We're trading Mike McGlinchey to the Titans for a third round pick. I mean, this is a good fit for him. A power run blocking system. I mean, the Titans run it all the time. He's like a pure run blocker, pretty much. I mean, he's not a good pass blocker in real life. That's not what he's supposed to be. So, I mean, I guess it makes sense that he's allowing sacks, but I, I don't know that I'm okay with that. So we're getting rid of him for a third round pick. Will Jonah Williams be better? I'm hoping because he's been a lot better the last two years. He was in Miami. Did they trade him? Well, I mean, hey, either way, hopefully he'll be better. We'll see. All right. Well, here in the draft, we have the number two overall pick. The Rams have number one, and I would bet that they'll go with a QB. Let me check. The Rams have, yeah, really old Matthew Stafford that they are paying a hefty amount of money, so good luck getting out of that contract, but yeah, they'll probably go with the QB here, at least I'm hoping, because obviously we're not going to go with the QB. I mean, we could, because Russ is old, but he's been good. I mean, he hasn't been, like, terrible. He hasn't been, like, the best of the best, but he's been good. But let's see what the Rams go with they do with they do go with the QB Philip Forbes which is kind of a fun name to say <laughs> but what do we want to do here I think I know but I just don't know which player god this guy's combine was insane his ratings just aren't anything crazy
crazy though. We'll see. This guy also has a big flaw too. I mean, this looks pretty good. I'm worried that his finesse moves would just be a B and not an A. Um, good pursuit though, great awareness, good tackle, but he's not that fast and he's a speed rusher. So, eh. And then same thing with Trey Morrison. I mean, he has good ratings, but he's just slow, even slower. Now he is stronger, but I think if we're gonna gamble on somebody, it might be Tom Osborne just because he is so fast. Now the downside is we're gonna have to move him to outside linebacker and he's gonna go down and overall. And his play rec isn't that good. And his pursuit isn't that good. And his block shed isn't that good. Is he even that good of a player? I don't know. See, this is what I always do. I'm always like, huh, nobody here really looks like that worth it. And then I end up reaching on somebody that I know won't be that good. So we might just trade down. God, that's like nothing though. <laughs> that's not worth it. Trade down one spot to get a third round pick. That's not the worst, but that's not worth it when it's the second overall pick. You know what? We will trade down a little bit, a little reluctantly, but we will trade down. Ooh, we could pick up a whole first round pick to trade down to 18. Probably should be more than that, but whatever. <laughs> Ooh, down to 16 for a one and a three. Down to 12 for a one and a five. See, the thing is, if we do that, we're not gonna get any of the edges we want here, but they don't look that crazy either. That really athletic one might be good, but his ratings just aren't that good. You know what? I'm just gonna trust my gut. I'm gonna say we're gonna get something better if we pick later. We'll trade down with the Packers. It's not the best trade in the world for us, but we do get a first out of it. A one and a five next year. We'll take it. I almost don't even want to check those players overalls, because now that I traded down, they're all gonna be amazing. I just know how my luck works. Okay, now with this pick, I think we'll go with a defensive lineman. We just don't really have that many needs left, which is a good thing, but it also makes drafting tough. I think we might go with Laron Bolden. He has good tackle, good play rack. I don't know if he's a great pass rusher though. There's also Will Vaughn. Is stronger, but a little slower. Has a block shed, which I kind of like. This guy might be a little better. Yeah, let's take Will Vaughn. He's stronger, is still fast for someone that big. Good tackle, good block shed. Let's take him. And he has hidden dev, 90 strength, 77 speed. So to get a first round pick and still hopefully a good overall player is a good thing. And with this next pick, we might go Bradley Reed. He looks like an overall well-rounded player. His zone coverage will probably be like a C, but I'm hoping he has at least A man coverage. Decent speed for safety in this game. Decent enough strength. He's six foot, 206, 23 years old, left-handed, just like me for real, out of Washington, just like me for real. Well, I don't go to that college, but you know what I mean. But yeah, our secondary's been kind of a problem throughout the rebuild. We just haven't been getting many picks. I think that's just more of a Madden issue than not having good players issue, because I mean, we literally have arguably the best corner and one of the better safeties in the NFL, so nothing I can do about that except add more good players. So Bradley Reed, normal dev, God damn it. But could be a good overall, we'll see. Oh, and we have back-to-back -back picks. Why do we have back-to-back? -back? Oh, we traded, wait, where did we get this one from? I genuinely don't remember, but we'll take it. <laughs> that works. With this pick, we might go with Mitchell Rose. There are two good-looking centers here. I don't know which one looks better. Hmm, I do like the low injury player, but this guy looks like he has more A's and more potential A's. Yeah, let's go Mitchell Rose. Do we need a center? Not really, but he looks like a really good value player here. He's 6'4", 3'12", 23 years old, out of Oklahoma. Actually, big misdirection there. We're gonna go with maybe a corner. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was probably really jarring, but Kenny Grubbs is a first round talent, and this guy looks good too, maybe even better. Taj Scott. Eh, that's a hard name to say. I don't know if I want to take him just for that reason. Ooh, Keith Wise also looks really good, and he has A press, but he isn't a guaranteed first round talent, so that might be riskier. Our secondary's been a bigger problem than center, and it looked like there were good centers available later. Let's just go Kenny Grubbs, because he's like a guaranteed at least good player. Good man coverage too, he's a better scheme fit right now. Another Washington player, so maybe we'll get that uh, team chemistry, I don't know. Let's take him though. And he does have hidden dev. I kind of thought he would have normal, but I was fine with that because he was a guaranteed good overall, but does have hidden dev, so that could be pretty huge. So that's a big overhaul to our secondary. We're looking pretty good. Peter Hardy, that's an elite name. There are two dick jokes just in that name alone, and he looks pretty good. We might just have to take him for like name value alone, but he also looks good. Not a very powerful player, which isn't great because that's our scheme, but he's 6'4", 321, 21 years old out of Tennessee. Amazing name. It never hurts to have offensive line depth, so let's take him. And he has hidden dev as well. Good strength, or good enough at least. Good excel, good agility for a lineman. Looks like a good player to me. God, I'm so bad at scouting running backs. Not that we need one, but I just can never tell which ones are good. Jonathan Maxwell looks pretty interesting. He's decently quick 
and strong, I guess. And he is a finesse move. Now, half the time, outside linebackers, like, pass rush ratings feel like lies because it's compared against, like, off-ball linebackers who, of course, aren't gonna have good pass rush moves at all. So they're only good ratings comparatively to those, but it still shows up in, as an A, which I think is stupid, but whatever. Classic EA. Is this guy gonna be amazing? No, but he could be good, and we need players that could be good, so let's take him. Normal dev, unfortunately, but good speed, solid enough strength, good excel. Could be a good player, we'll see. I just like the finesse moves. And then lots of picks in this draft. This is gonna be the last one. We're gonna go with another edge just in case. It's gonna be Joey Spray or Springs, I almost said Spriggs. Good speed, decent enough speed at least. It was first for defensive ends, but it's still not that crazy. It has good enough finesse moves. I don't know if he's gonna be great, but could be. So let's take him. And normal dev, of course, but we'll see. Actually, it looked really similar to the last dude we just took, so might be the same overall. Okay, so I want to go through these players pretty quick because there are a lot of picks that we made, but it was overall a pretty good draft. Apparently, we just loved t taking 74 overalls for some reason. That's just the overall we hit a lot, but Will Vaughn is definitely a good player, 74 overall. No pass rush to his game literally at all, but looks like a good run defender. Is a pure run defender really worth the 12th overall pick? Uh, definitely not, but he has a good overall and a good dev trait, so we'll take it. Bradley Reed is a 74, of, cor of course no dev trait for him. Kenny Grubbs is a 74 overall, does have a dev trait. Good speed, good man coverage, good play rec, really good excel, so we'll take that. Peter Hardy is a 74 overall, which is better than I thought he would be. Obviously he has the dev trait too, so we'll take that. Well balanced in terms of run and pass blocking, but definitely more of a finesse guy, which isn't great for our system, but it he's still a good player. And Jonathan Maxwell is pretty good at a 70 overall, that was pretty good value. Mine even start, maybe? Maybe. Does he have traits? He does have swim move and spin move. High motor. So he could play well. We might start him, we'll think about it. And then Springs was a 68 overall defensive end, dropped to a 67 at outside linebacker, but his good depth. His B finesse moves was only 71. Ugh, I was thinking at least like 75, 76, but whatever. And then the CPU took a really good quarterback. A 70 overall QB with 95 throw power. Madden's tempting me to start him. We might pull some like Eli Manning shit and just trade him immediately. I mean, not exactly the same, but still. And then they also picked a decent running back at a 71 overall, Daryl Truman. So that was a really, really good draft, honestly. Filled out like everything left that we need on the team, so we're looking pretty good. But let's get a look at the team heading into year number three. Is it year three or is it year four? I think it's three. All right, well, here we're trading Damari Mathis for a fourth round pick. Damari Mathis is like our fifth corner now. We just really don't need him that much. I would rather just have him get an opportunity. He'll be the number two corner for the Packers. I mean, they had like, God, who was their number two corner? It was like a 67 overall. It was Keandre Thomas and Shamar John Charles, but he's playing with morale. It was Keandre Thomas pretty much. So that's, it's not great. <laughs> so hopefully he can do the, do well there, but also hopefully not because then I'll feel stupid for trading him, but we'll see what happens. You know, this is a really, really hard rebuild and I didn't expect it to be, <laughs> but here's a look at the team heading into year number three of the rebuild. Definitely upgraded this year. I mean, Jonah Williams, Hunter Henry, definitely some good additions there. You know what? We'll start Peter Hardy. I mean, Ben Powers wasn't great last year. I mean, he wasn't bad. Five sacks at left guard isn't the worst, but Hardy actually could turn into a good overall, so we'll see. And we asked, added LaVisca Chenault, so we'll see if he does well. I almost forgot about him. Uh, hopefully we're better than like four and 13. Like I said, this has been a really tough rebuild. But on the defense, we added Bryce Hall. We added Will Vaughn, I think his name is. Yeah, Will Vaughn. Added Reed at safety. You know what? We'll start Maxwell just because we don't really have anything to lose. I mean, we were literally 4 and 13 last year. So hopefully he can do well somehow in defense of rookie of the year. I mean, between three rookies starting, hopefully we can win it, but we'll see. We also have Grubbs, but checking Moss's stats, he actually has been pretty good. So we'll keep him starting, but if he struggles, we'll definitely slide Grubbs in. I'll rearrange the specialists though, although they don't look too bad. But with that, I'll see y'all at the midseason point of year three, and hopefully we're doing better. God, this has to be like the worst rebuild I've ever had. Um, at the midseason point of year three, we're one and six. We literally have a combined, what, year one, we went five and 12. We have a combined 10 wins through three years. I mean, I guess two and a half, but uh, that's not great. That's like some Browns level shit, like mid 2010 Browns or mid 2010s, not 
it. You know what I mean. We do have a lot of upgrades on the bright side, but like, uh, we, we gotta make some big improvements this offseason. To be fair, the free agencies haven't been super great for us. Russ is not doing great, but that is nice. But yeah, we definitely need to do something this offseason. Hopefully there are actual good players to sign. For re-signings though, who do we want back here? Javante Williams, he, he's been good, but he hasn't been like so good that like we can't live without him. Plus he's not interested. Only 3.9 yards per carry this year. Kind of the same deal with Justin Simmons. He hasn't been that good either. At least I haven't noticed. Oh, he finally got his first interception, but those pass deflection numbers are so low. I mean, I guess he's not allowing many catches, but still. How much does he want? Four years, 54 mil. That's not terrible. If he takes it, okay, he takes it. That's fine. He's been bad, but that's fine. Jerry Judy's still young, only 25 years old. We can afford like player friendly. Four years, 49.6 mil. That's not that bad at all. He takes it. Garrett Bowles has been a stud, but as soon as I resign him, he's gonna suck. But we'll try two years, 27.2 mil. He takes it. Quinn Miners has been a stud. At least was year one. We'll try three years, 23.4. That's pretty cheap. We can afford like four years, 33.6 mil. He's not super interested, but let's see if he takes that. He does. If Caden Stern, I mean, he's really cheap. Caden Stern's four years, 17.2 mil. He takes it. DJ Jones. Oh, we can't sign him yet, but he's been pretty good too. So once we can resign him, I definitely want to. Zach Allen, how has he been? There are a lot of contracts this year. God damn. He hasn't been the best. I would say DJ Jones has been playing better. Oh God. And we have Ben Powers. I guess he's a backup now though. Alex Singleton, he's a starter. Baron Browning, he's a borderline starter. This is a lot more players than I expected, but it's not that many good ones. So I guess it's fine. But with that, I think we're good. I hope we're good. Hopefully we don't finish too bad. I mean, it would be nice to have a really high pick again, but I want to know that this team can at least play decently well. I mean, we'll see. So with that, let's get to the end of year number three. And I guess hopefully we either finish really bad or really good. I don't know, but I doubt there's a chance we finish good at all. Well, I was going to say that's exactly what I didn't want to happen, but that's fine. We finish eight and nine, but that also leaves us in a weird position. Russell Wilson wasn't that good this year at all by Madden standards. Honestly, not that good for like real life. I mean, not like bad, but not amazing. 26 touchdowns is kind of low. 11 picks is a little high. I mean, that's not terrible, but like we're in such a weird position. Of course, Javante Williams has a really good year when we need to resign him. Over 1,400 yards, 4.6 per carry, 18 touchdowns. Cortland Sutton over 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns, only 700 yards for Jerry Judy. This just feels like a really unlucky rebuild. Ooh, we definitely made a good decision on the offensive line. Jonah Williams was a stud at right tackle and Peter Hardy was good at left guard better than Ben Powers was so at the very least we made good choices there Alex Singleton led the team in tackles Will Vaughn with 12 tackles for loss led the team in sacks of course Zach Allen when he needs a contract gets nine sacks why wouldn't he seven for Will Vaughn only six for Jonathan Maxwell only four for Jeremiah Stanford classic Madden pass rusher sophomore slump it always happens and we had a decent amount of interceptions three for Bryce Hall two for Singleton, Sertan, and Reed, and then one for a few players. So actually, a good amount of picks this year. We'll take it. But of course, Patrick Mahomes wins MVP. Why wouldn't he? No Broncos up here. Offensive player of the year goes to Joe Mixon. Javante Williams at number four when he needs a contract, of course. Defensive player of the year goes to TJ Watt. I'm a super optimistic person, if you couldn't tell. Uh, Nick Campbell wins Offensive Rookie of the Year for the Dolphins. No Broncos. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Caleb Harris of the Colts. Will Vaughn at number three. I'm surprised. I thought he had a chance to win it, but fair enough. Hopefully he has a good dev trait. Maxwell at four, Reed at five. So no awards, unfortunately, but we still have another year. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the rebuild. Ooh, why do his eyes look weird? Am I, is that just me? His eyes look scary. They almost look like they're glowing or something. Or maybe his face is just really dark. I don't know. That's scary. Keep him away from me. <laughs> but yeah, we still have another year. We'll see if we can do better. Being 100% honest, we might trade Russell Wilson. He just hasn't been as good as I was hoping for. He hasn't been as good as he usually is in Madden Simulation, of course. If this last year doesn't go well, this might have to be one that we revisit at some point, because I, I would feel bad having this as the only, like, Broncos rebuild, because it's just not going the way I want it to. And any dev ups here? I mean, Russ has Superstar. He had that when I was checking upgrades, though. He must have got that last year. I'm surprised there isn't one for Javante Williams. And then I think that might be it. It. I was hoping for one for maybe like either Vaughn or like Singleton or Sanders or somebody or Reed even, but unfortunately,
unfortunately not. So with that, I was gonna say let's get into free agency, but we still have to check the re-signings. The Giants do win the Super Bowl here 27 to 10 over the Chiefs. That's definitely an interesting one. I guess that's possible. Giants have good coaching, so I could definitely see it in the next few years or so. But the big thing is who do we want to re-sign? I would re-sign Javante Williams if he was interested, but he's just not. I mean, he's not that expensive. If he takes this, seven years, 61.6 mil. Okay, he does. Is he gonna suck next year now that we re-signed him? Probably. But he was really good last year, so we'll see. DJ Jones was meh. He's old. We can upgrade there. Zach Allen was good, but I just know that once we re-sign him, he's not gonna do as well. But three years, 31.8 mil isn't too bad. He takes it. Ben Powers, eh, we have his replacement already. Alex Singleton, we can find another linebacker. And then it's just like a lot of depth. So we'll get into free agency with a decent amount of money. I'm just hoping that there's some good players available. Oh, and actually, I want to see how did the... It was the Packers, right? That's... Oh, of course. It looks like they made the playoffs. Did pretty well, so that's not going to be a great pick. Well, I should have known. <laughs> In free agency, there are definitely some good players, though. All right, well, we're going to be trying to make a ton of moves in free agency, and uh, we're getting a little uh, silly and goofy here, if you will. Um, there's one move here that's maybe controversial, which it's not showing up on the screen now, but you'll see it in a second. We're getting a little uh, wacky here. The first one's going to be Greg Rousseau. We're going to move him to outside linebacker. Not an exact scheme fit because he is more of a power rusher here. We only use speed, but wow, we only use speed. That's not a great sentence, but he's an 80, 88 overall power. He's like an 85 overall speed rusher, so it's close enough. He'll still be good. Assuming we do get him, which we do have the lead for him, even though he's not interested, so we'll see what happens. If we don't get him, I would say it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it might be the end of the world because we literally have like a 72 overall starting at edge, so we'll see what happens. We're also going for Michael Pierce. We lost uh, DJ Jones, which I'm recording this the next day. I kind of forgot about. If we don't get Michael Pierce, we could just like re-sign DJ Jones, honestly, but I don't know. We'll see. We're also going to go for Jerome Baker. We don't really have a linebacker outside of Drew Sanders, and even then, Drew Sanders isn't that high of an overall. We're also going for Adrian Amos, who just got signed by the Jets in real life today. Straight up the New York Packers. All of fucking Aaron's buddies there now. But we'll see if we can bring him in here. We've had kind of like a safety issue throughout the whole rebuild. Well, actually, no. Hold on. How was our rookie safety last year? I don't remember. Actually, he wasn't too bad. Pat Sertan was really awful, though. Good lord. At least he got two picks, but ugh. Does he, like, not have any good traits in this game? Uh, disciplined. Doesn't have big hitter. I don't know if that matters. Probably not. Um, I, I don't know. Because he should be playing a lot better than that, clearly. So I guess we won't go for Amos. That frees up a little money, but I don't know what to do with that money anyways. Wow, I just got like mad deja vu for no reason. I don't know why, but uh, CJ Hender, we don't really need depth at corner. What the fuck do we need? You know what, Adrian Amos, you're gonna be a Bronco. We're still gonna offer for you just because we can, and I wanna spend the money somewhere. <laughs> and then the last offer and the most possibly controversial is we're gonna be going for Trey Lance. Russ is normally really good in this game. I mean, he's won MVP a few times in my rebuilds. Just here, he isn't doing it, and if he isn't doing it, and we're not having a good record, we might as well replace him. I mean, he's been pretty good, but nowhere near what he usually is, and Trey Lance is good in this game most of the time. So I don't know, it could be risky, but at this point, who cares? We've had a losing record every year. We need to try something different. This team is a lot harder than I realized to rebuild. So let's see if any of these players sign. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can get all of them. We have the lead for all of them, but let's see. They all sign except Amos, but we still have the lead for him, and we get Rousseau, we get Pierce, we get Baker, and we get Trey Lance. So definitely a switch up here at the end, but Amos, do you want to sign now? Oops, I went to a weird screen. Uh, still not signed. Oh, the Jets are offering. That's kind of fitting. Uh, does he sign now? Okay, he signs with the Jets. You know what? I'm cool with that. That's the first realistic thing I've seen all rebuild, arguably all year in this game. <laughs> Ooh, Greg Rousseau goes up at outside linebacker. I mean, he goes down as a speed rusher, which which is unfortunate, but at least it makes the team look a little better. But is there like anything else we could upgrade in free agency? Because I want to spend the money we have on something. Maybe like a center? Not that Lloyd Cushenberry's been terrible, but no, we can't really upgrade there anyways. Damn, what the hell? The Chiefs got Jalen Waddell and Trey, Hend er, Trey Hendrickson. I almost said Henderson. Of course, our division rival goes absolutely hard in free agency. The Raiders get Khalil Mack back. That's fun. Not so fun that, again, they're our division rival, but it's still fun. They also get Elijah Mitchell. Okay. And Kenny Moore. How much money did the Chiefs have? Um, 
J.K. Dobbins. Do you want to be a Bronco? Maybe. Oh, I'm out of offers. Okay, if we get him, we get him. If we don't, we don't. But let's get to the draft and let's try and hopefully finish off this team. But actually, before we get there, I do want to make a trade. All right, well, here we're going to be trading Russell Wilson to the Lions for a second round pick. I tried to get a first round pick because I still think he could be worth that. I mean, he's been playing pretty well. He's not the greatest overall in the world anymore, but he's been doing pretty well. But we're still getting a second round pick for the Li or from the Lions, so it's not too bad. They literally like didn't have a QB. Who was their QB before? It was Phil Burks, a uh, truly an elite player. And he has good throw power and good speed, but that's about it. So uh, I can't wait to see Russ win MVP on the Lions. That'll make me super happy. All right, well, in the draft, we have the number 11 overall pick. I really don't know what we're gonna do here, honestly. We're kind of out of needs at this point. The problem with this team is we, we don't have, like, true superstar talent anymore. I mean, we have Pat Sertan, but he's been playing like shit. I guess we signed Greg Rousseau. We'll see what he can do. On offense, we don't have, like, any superstars, though. We have Javante Williams, and that's, like, our closest, even then he's been, like, pretty good. But he's really only been getting yards because he's been getting, like, a million carries. I guess, like, our biggest weakness in terms of overall is maybe the D-line, linebacker, safety, maybe, like, third corner, center, something like that. I don't know. God, dude, I feel like I'm just in an endless cycle of, oh, hey, this guy looks pretty good, but then they just end up being, like, not super good, and then they just end up being, like, a borderline replacement level player for us, but Emmanuel Turk, um, is projected to go round one. I don't know how good he actually is. He has B power moves, but, I mean, that could be good. We saw that one guy who had, like, B finesse moves, but it was a 71, but I feel like finesse moves is always a little lower, even if it has a higher grade, because not as many defensive ends have a good finesse moves grade to begin with, so it's just compared to the ones who have, like, shit finesse moves, so then it looks decent against it. I don't know. You know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say. This guy looks good. I feel like I take so many defensive linemen in rebuilds, though, uh, but he's strong. I don't know. He looks pretty good. Is there anything else I could do? We could go with a corner, but we already have, like, good enough ones there. Safety, I looked. There wasn't really anyone that good. Fuck it. Emmanuel Turk. Normal dev. God damn it. Could be a decent overall, though. We'll see. Oh, yeah, and we have two first round picks. What do we want to do with this one now? Uh, let's go with the safety. Joey Dockery. He doesn't look good. <laughs> Del Woodley. A awareness. Hold on, that's confusing. How do you have A awareness, but D play recognition? Did you, like, just switch over to defense? Were you playing, like, receiver or something before? And his pursuit's not that good. I mean, he has decent enough speed. Sure, fuck it. I don't know what else to do here. Normal dev. God damn it. <laughs> I am in pain. I absolutely need to revisit this rebuild unless this last year is just somehow randomly amazing, which I highly, highly doubt it. I was thinking about taking this guy round or round one. I wish I could speak English. Tavon Sherwood. I like the pursuit. Play rec tackle. He's absolutely fucking lootly gonna have normal dev. Well, maybe. No, he probably will. Yeah, that's probably the reason he's fallen a little bit, but he's 6'2", 245, 21 years old out of Oklahoma. I realized I didn't read the like player profiles for the other players, but we're obviously gonna move him into middle linebacker, but he has bad coverage, so he's probably not gonna, he's probably gonna go down to middle linebackers, so hopefully he's a good enough overall where he can start still. I don't know. Let's take him. Okay, he has hidden dev. I just need to be super pessimistic and then we'll get the hidden dev. Uh, is it gonna matter? Because it's only one year? Probably not, but if he's a good enough overall, that could be nice. We'll see. And then like literally two picks later, one pick later, we have another pick. Just put me out of my misery already. I don't, <laughs> I've had enough of this. Get me out of here. Oh, this guy's a great run blocker. No, but he's actually a pretty good pass blocker. Alec Hoffman, I have no idea if he's good. Not a scheme fit, but I don't care at this point. Let's take him. Hidden dev, good speed for a lineman, fine enough strength. He might start. I don't know. I hope he does because other than him, I don't know if we've gotten one starter from this draft. All right, with the last pick probably of the rebuild, we're gonna go Dontrell Spriggs. He's 5'9", 199, 22 years old, out of Arizona State. Ran a 4'4'2 at the combine. I'm having second thoughts. I wonder if we should like try to trade for a player because we need someone like truly really good. Can we afford that though in our current situation? Probably not, but at least if I try, I can say that I tried. All right, well here we're literally just recreating the Patriots tight end group. We're trading a third, a seventh, and Caden Stearns for Mike Gesicki. I mean, we'll just take any upgrade we can get at this point. It's not like a massive upgrade or anything, but it makes the team look a little better, and I didn't know what to do with that pick anyways, so I like it.
like it. All right, well, I don't wanna talk about this draft. <laughs> We're gonna pretend that this draft didn't exist. How about that? Um, does, does that sound cool? I think that sounds pretty cool. I think we'll go with that. Holy shit, that is a very silver offense. Goddamn. Dog, I feel like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> well, here's a look at the team heading into the fourth and final year of the rebuild. It's, it's definitely a team, I will say that. This is probably the lowest overall team I have ever gone into year four with. Let me know down below, have you like attempted to rebuild this team? Like, do I just suck or is this team like ridiculously hard? I mean, I guess you wouldn't exactly know because I mean, these are my custom rosters, so I guess it wouldn't be exactly the same, but like still, it just seems really hard, like me for your mother. But uh, yeah, obviously we have Trey Lance now. We'll see how that goes. I hate how it doesn't change the fucking bandana or the headband color. It's still red. It hurts the soul a little bit. But uh, obviously we traded for Mike Gesicki. We drafted uh, Alec Hoffman. Is it gonna be a mistake to start him at center? Probably. Is he gonna allow 10 sacks even though he is a pass protector? Probably. But we'll see what happens. And then on defense, we obviously added Michael Pierce, Greg Rousseau, Jerome Baker, Tevin Sherwood, or Tavon. Wait, was it Tevin or... Oh, I clicked the wrong player. I was expecting to see Tevin or Tavon and I saw Jeremiah. That threw me off. It was Tavon. On. Okay, so we are gonna start him. Maybe it's weird to start him over Drew Sanders, who's been waiting uh, to start for their whole rebuild, but uh, my rebuilds are weird in general, so welcome to the channel if you're new, but I'm sure if you've seen them before, you you would know that. I'll get the rest of the depth chart figured out, though. I need to change some of this shit. I'm in severe pain. Let's get to the end of year number four, and hopefully we can make the playoffs somehow, even though this team isn't that good. What the fuck is this? <laughs> what am I looking at? Are Greg Russo and Pat Sertan trying to make a fucking baby or something right now. I, somebody needs to, like, get the rights to an NFL game, because I don't know what the fuck EA is doing. They're doing almost nothing right. All right, well, here we are at the end of year number four. Um, if you've made it this far and you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe. It helps out a ton. I think I set the goal for this video to, like, 5,500 subs, but as of the time of recording this, we're at, like, 5460 or something. So maybe that was a little low, maybe, like, 6 K would have been better, but you know what? For like every sub goal for the future, we're just gonna set it like a thousand higher because by that point, I'll probably be almost at the next one. Anyways, you know what? That's probably a better idea. I'll do that. But anyways, yeah, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It helps out a ton. Plus, if you enjoy rebuilds, that's literally all I do. So I think you'll enjoy them. But here's a look at the defense at the end of the fourth and final season. Um, Before I reveal how we finished, I'm gonna check the stats. I think that's probably pretty telling to you how we finished. Trey Lance was pretty good, 4,700 yards, 38 touchdowns. The picks were a little high, but that's more touchdowns than Russ ever got here. So I don't think that was too bad of a move. We got younger at QB, we upgraded, and we got a pick for Russell Wilson. So that was definitely not a bad move. Javante Williams wasn't great, barely 1,000 yards, only 4.2 per carry, 13 touchdowns. LaVisca Chenault was our leading receiver. Jerry Judy also had 1,000 yards. Mike Gesicki almost hit 1,000 yards too, which would have been interesting. Ooh, that's why we were bad. Okay, so something someone told me a while ago is quarterbacks do affect how your offensive line plays. So maybe Russell Wilson would have been the better option here because our line was holding up pretty well. But as soon as we let him go, it kind of goes to shit here. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know if we would have done this done well with Russ this year either. Jerome Baker led the team in tackles with 137. Good amount of tackles for loss. Sacks. Jeremiah Stanford was pretty good. 10 sacks for him. 15 tackles for loss. 8 sacks for Greg Russo. So five for Pierce and Baker. Only our, our interior was terrible this year, except for Pierce. Pierce was pretty good. And then interception, what? Nine interceptions for Jerome Baker? Is that like the most ever for a linebacker? Jerome Baker of all people, does he even have nine total career interceptions? He has three total career interceptions, literally a third of what he got this year. Thank you, yay, very cool. But let's check out the early awards. I can't wait to see Russell Wilson winning MVP. No, it's Trevor Lawrence on the Vikings, Tua on the Steelers, what the fuck? Oh, that's that's just petty. Russell Wilson edges out Trey Lance by one spot, and the Lions go nine and eight. But I mean, it really wasn't that different, so it is what it is. Offensive player of the year goes to Devontae Adams. Of course, top two are division rivals. No Broncos. Defensive player of the year goes to another division rival in Joey Bosa. Somehow Jerome Baker doesn't win defensive player of the year with like almost 140 tackles, like nine tackles for loss and nine interceptions. Joey Bosa better have had like 35 fucking sacks. I'm going to 
check it, and it better be really high. Like, I'm gonna need to be after doing this rebuild. No Broncos up there for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Tavon Sherwood wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Cool. All right, what the fuck did, uh, who was it? Joey Bosa? Okay, yeah, that's valid. Tw <laughs> 29 sacks, 11 tackles for loss. How do you even get 29 sacks? How does that even happen? Holy shit, Chris Boswell. 41%. What is this team? They had two different QBs playing. This Morgan Wilson guy and Jared Goff. Joey Bosa had 29 sacks, and their kicker, Chris Boswell, was 5 for 12. What the fuck? What is this game, dude? But yeah, if you couldn't tell from my tone already, uh, we, we, we didn't make the playoffs. Uh, we went, we went 7 and 10. I mean, to be fair, we didn't, <laughs> we don't have that good of a roster, but I feel like we should have at least had a winning record at some point. Like, I don't feel like this is that bad of a roster. God, if y'all watching don't like complaining, you're gonna think I'm just the worst. I'm, I'm not norm, I'm not normally this complainy, I swear. I guess we weren't that high in terms of, like, team overall, but these teams actually probably did well, so they're probably playing with morale. So, like, purely without morale, we could have a better roster? I don't fucking know. If Madden 24 isn't- No, I can't complain about the game. As much as I want to, we didn't have that good of a roster. <laughs> but I really want to complain about the game, trust me. So, yeah, I think this is gonna be a revisiting the rebuild at some point. It's just a really goddamn hard rebuild with the money they're paying, like, Russ, and pretty much just, like, all their players. They're paying a lot of players, just in general. So hopefully we can do better next time we re rebuild this team. I'm sorry, Broncos fans, for doing a disservice here. I'm normally better at rebuilding than this. But if you still enjoyed me, uh, being angry and, uh, being terrible at this game, um, <laughs> be sure to drop a like and a sub, uh, and turn on notifications. If we can get, like, 800 likes or whatever I set the goal to, which, uh, uh, preemptive thank you for a thousand likes on the fucking Vikings fantasy draft rebuild. Uh, if we can hit a fat or if we can hit like 800 on this one, I'll do another fantasy draft. But I'll shut up now. Thank you all so much for watching. You're a legend if you've made it this far. But as always, I'll see y'all again in the next video. I'm playing with something on my desk. I don't know what this is. Goodbye.